Legend Total War here, and today we're doing another Rate Your One Man Doom Stack, this time covering Village. So apparently Village is essentially unkillable because of this ability here, Vessel of Chaos with his unique item. Um, what happens, triggers when casting, as long as he's casting spells, he will regenerate his uh, barrier at a quite a rapid rate. He's got an absolute ton of barrier as well, if we have a look at him, 2610. Looking at his resistances, he's got 31% uh, ward save, 40% physical resistance. Right, those are the only two ones that really matter. So, essentially 70% physical resistance, 71%. So he's not at max. I think it's important to note that he didn't pick up the Sword of Cain, which I like. Um, so know that this could be essentially stronger if he did do that. And I, I really do appreciate something that's... We'll see how good it actually is. Because, yeah, he could potentially get another 30% ward save, making, um, getting him to 61%, which would make him basically immune from physical attacks and very resistant against magical attacks. Spells don't really matter that much. All right, uh, what's he got on here? So that gives him frenzy. Yeah, I think that's the right call there because he's already got magic attacks with that. Now let's jump in here and just see how good he is. We're going up against a combined force of Talson and Ungram Iron Fist. Just see how it goes. He says something at the, um, in the email as well, that at the moment Village has a bug where sometimes the tech tree physical resistance doesn't apply correctly. Okay, so he'll actually have 12% less than he should. Okay. Well, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I think the main thing with this one is we have to make sure that we're always casting a spell. Even if it's a piece of crap spell, just constantly regenerating the barrier. We are the castling. So if we have a look, he does also have a reduced cost on... Um, oh, I forgot to show his equipment. He had the Obsidian Blade, Armor of Destiny, Talisman of Preservation, his thing, and he's got the Crown of Everlasting Conquest, which gives him uh, regen. Okay, so if we keep using... Oh my god, Pink Fire of Zinch is free. There's no Winds of Magic cost on it. This is two Winds of Magic? What? <laughs> what? His spell casting is cheaper than Kairos. I haven't played his village yet, so I don't know. That's that's I need to have a look at this. Does it trigger the passive though? Let's just let's just find out real quick. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Oh, damn. And he's a small target, so all this stuff is... What? He is just not taking down. Oh, yeah, because of missile resistance. Oh, my God. Hang on, let's just see. If I just sit here and do this... Yeah, it's like... Kind of regenerating just as quickly. Oh god, that is nuts. Too bad he doesn't have life leeching. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, that is nuts. He is... He's indestructible. And he doesn't even have the Sword of Cain. Like, he... Oh, this is, this is nuts. That one's... Using magic ammunition as well. That is fucking crazy. Oh, see, it's definitely gonna nerf this. This is way too much fun for it to be left in the game. So I could use this one here, but you know, there's no cooldown, free upkeep, uh, free cost on it. <laughs> Oh, that is nuts. Oh, hang on. Every time I cast something, we do actually have unlimited winds of magic because I could just keep doing this. Since it's not bugged anymore. 
We'll see how much reserves I can actually just end up with at the end of this battle by just using zero wins of magic spells. Oh my god. Yeah, he doesn't even need the Sword of Cain. Like, you need some serious firepower to get through this. <laughs> just keep regenerating that barrier. I hope he's got all the hit point increasing abilities, so that that is actually his maximum barrier. You know, Throt's defeat trait, um, Gore Drenched. Where are those dwarfs? They're on the way. Just fucking nuts. Wait, hang on. Is that actually... Oh, it does actually cost one Winds of Magic. It just doesn't say that it does. Um, maybe it's costing us... I'm actually not sure. Yeah, it is actually costing one Winds of Magic. Right, 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 okay. This is the game's lying to us, that's all. <laughs> Fair enough. Still, if that costs one Winds of Magic, and how many casts of it do we need to get this? Because this one here gives us... About three wins of magic, yeah. So you will actually end up running out eventually, right? So all of the, all of that casting that I was doing was a little bit of a waste. Right, let's try this. It said it was zero. That was. Uh, I guess if I use, oh, doesn't have green magic. That's pretty nuts. The, the spell mastery just keeps going up with the twisted twin. Okay, I feel lied to about that. <laughs> it doesn't say it costs winds of magic, but it actually does. Still, even if you just keep casting Cinch's Firestorm, you will end up with a lot of. Like, more than a hundred wins of magic overall throughout the battle. He's not... Oh, but he's a demon, so... Even if he ends up, uh, getting a little bit unstable, he should be okay. As long as he doesn't go to minus 50. And he's, he's still at 66 deaths, that's okay. Again, if you had the Sword of Cain, you'd be completely unbreakable. We're just not taking damage. He doesn't even need that regen item. Doesn't even need it. Like, okay, let's let's do this. Let's just sit there for a bit and see if he actually ends up taking any serious damage. His barrier regenerates instantly. I don't have the thing on at the moment. Oh, right, he's got Paragon of Change as well. Right, so he's always generating barrier. It's just that casting helps speed it up. Right. No, he's just completely indestructible. You would need like a full army of guns firing at him all at once, just to just to get through that barrier. Of like Sisters of Avalon because of the magic damage. Like they just they can't get through the barrier at all. This is insane. <laughs> I feel bad for all the other 10 out of 10s out there at the moment because this is like an 11 out of 10. <laughs> this is this is so ridiculous. He's 
He's not even at his ward save cap. I would have expected him to take more damage than this, but he's just not taking any. And some of these here have magic damage, like the Treekin. And they just... I can't break through it. And then come the dwarves, because, yeah, this is basically the end of the uh, the dwarves... Uh, sorry, the high, uh, wood elves here. Okay. So, okay, we'll find out how much Winds of Magic this actually generates. So, we're at 74 at the moment. Pop this down. Yeah, it only generates like two Winds of Magic. So, and let's see, does this does this actually cost Winds of Magic? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does cost one. Even though it doesn't say it. Bit of a weird thing with that. Let's try the tre uh, Treason of Zinch and see if that is actually. Is that actually free? That's free. Yeah, that actually doesn't cost anything. But it doesn't do any damage. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, you actually. You have to. You, you gotta actually spend the winds of magic to generate this. So that that won't work. So yeah, you can keep doing that for free. Okay, I was just curious about that. <laughs> oh god. And he like wipes them out quickly as well. <laughs> I regret wasting all that Winds of Magic at the start of the battle, but I was just curious. Like, even Ungram is not getting through the barrier. Ungram is one of the highest damage dealing single entities in the game. Can't get through the barrier. Village is absolutely smacking him. The thing is, even if they did get through the barrier, he's he regen. Oh, hang on, now they're getting through the barrier. What's going on here? Better regenerate. Getting too close there. Maybe pop this down, Ungro. Yeah, so it's going to take characters like Ungram Iron Fist in order just to get through the barrier. But even then, in a straight up duel, like, Village is winning against him here. Oh, oh, they got through the barrier. Look at that, they actually managed it. How about that? All it took is one of the strongest characters in the game. And there he goes, he's gone. Jeez. Surprised the army losses hasn't been triggered yet. What's going on here? There must be something still on the ground that I can't see. Weird how we didn't inflict the army losses. Yeah, okay, there must be like artillery over here that just didn't come in. We just can't see them. Yeah, that, that was what's going on. Just preserving a ton of bounce power. Okay, let's just sit here and tank it and let's see what happens. Yeah, um, too, getting too shielded by the trees there. 
Here we go. No, not fair. I gotta get in closer. <laughs> they, they're not accurate enough. There you go. Come on, shoot me in the face. They can't. He's just got too much missile resistance. Like, even if you used magic missiles here. Still looking at, like... Yeah, it is, yeah. You, you would need magic missiles to even stand a chance with that. Oh, that is just absolutely ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> I can't believe how powerful Village is. Dare I say, this is potentially the strongest one-man doomstack in the game now. Like, this is better than Archeon. This is better than, uh, than Azazel. Because, like, Azazel took damage in the battle. He just didn't take much. Uh, then again, he did take some damage. It's just that, uh... It took Ungrim Iron Fist and us basically letting him do that because we could have um, could have outrun him. Just got our barrier recharged. And Azazel didn't exactly go up against Ungrim. Oh, that is just absolutely ridiculous. Well, yeah, it's... That just breaks my rating system. Because he's indestructible. We could have gone up against more armies, you know. The Wood Elf, they, they couldn't do anything here. There's, there's only one Ungrim Iron Fist. They can't send four of them in. In order for him to actually take serious damage, he has to go up against something like Colex Sun Eater. And even then, he would probably still beat him. You know, you're not going to see Kerlex Sun Eater fighting side by side with these guys. Well, actually, you, you could. It is potentially possible. Yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting to get another one of the Warriors of Chaos one-man doomstacks. Because, you know, we've, we did Archeon first. Then we did Kerlex. We haven't done Bellicor, have we? We did Bellicor back in Realm of Chaos, but that was different. Uh, he's got a different skill set now. Uh, and we did Azazel and uh, Valkyr. We haven't done Sigvald and haven't done Festus. Um, Sacrifice to the yeah, that that is just absolutely nuts. I need to have a, go a look at his skill set. I don't know what's causing him to have essentially free spells because I haven't looked into him, but this definitely intrigues me to give him a go. Yeah, he could have definitely taken on four armies. Because, like, the more units they bring in, you're just casting spells on them, and they can't do anything about it. You know, all I had to do is just not waste so much magic at the start, and it would have been fine. Because I casted a lot of those those flame spells. Because I thought it was free. It said it was free, but it lies. Freaking lies. Thought the game was going to shit itself there. I just want to get to the tur end turn and have a look at... No. It's not going to be auto resolve it, is it? No. Damn it, you fool! Okay, still going. Can we get through this end turn without any more... ...distractions? Imagine him with the knowledgeable trait from Warhammer 2 as well, giving him five wins of magic each. Yeah, look at that. He has access to more than than a uh, hundred wins of magic, but after every battle, it just it all it all gets lost. All right, let's have a look at him. What is causing this? So that one there is reducing his wins of magic cost by ten percent. That doesn't account for free wins of magic.
Yeah, it doesn't account for, I'm not sure. Like I said, I just haven't played as him before. Does he have an event going on that's reducing wins of magic cost? Ah, uh, there it is. He had an event going on. The Trance of Conjury. Winds of magic cost minus 50% for all spells. Right. Right, 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 right. That's why it was essentially free. But it's only going to last one more turn. So yeah, he just timed it really well. Right, okay. Alright, maybe I should be a little bit more... Take that into consideration for, um... For, um... You know, his rating. Because he... We did cast a lot of spells. He didn't seem to need to. Yeah, okay. Look, it's obviously still 10 out of 10. Obviously. Because even if he wasn't casting all those spells... Um... You'd still get quite a few of them off. And he could just keep fighting them in melee. And it, again, it took something like Ungram Iron Fist to even break through his barrier. Alright, let's have a look at his traits. Alright, let's have a look here. What do you got? There's the Wage Through Gore. There's the Deep Cleaner. Right, those are the only ones that seem to really matter. Then just melee defense. Oh, and physical resistance, yeah. Pride Assassin there. Um, did you get, manage to get Wurzag? I don't see it here. Good, you got... Um, but yeah, you got... Krokgar's one, that's good. You took out um, Kairos, that, that's fine. That's actually a bugged trait, because every time you fight a battle manually, or... Um, Load the save file. Whatever wins of magic above 100, you'll just get reset down to 100. It's bugged. Uh, yeah, I don't... S unless I'm blind, which sometimes I do miss this stuff. I don't see Wurzag's defeat trait in here, and that's fine. He doesn't need it. But extra 10% physical resistance definitely wouldn't have been too bad. So that's the only thing I can think of here that would... Um, yeah, you got um, Archon's defeat trait. Only thing here that would have been a bit better. Maybe, maybe getting... Um, Nakai's defeat trade as well for more melee defense because you just want to get hit as as little as possible I mean 94 melee defense is pretty good But it would also be good to have 104 melee defense because there's other guys out there with with pretty high melee attack Yeah, yeah Insanely good, but he timed it really well while this event was going on winds of magic cost minus 50% for all spells That is just ridiculous. Um, he doesn't have access to the um, life leeching which would have given him essentially free winds of magic um, and yeah, he could have made this better in terms of the actual one-man doom stack by getting the Sword of Cain, but I greatly appreciate the fact that he didn't. He didn't do that. So that's good, because that's that was a big thing with the Archeon sort of... Uh, he had the Sword of Cain, which, you know, Sword of Cain is just... It's just boring. Like, if you can manage to make a one-man doom stack without the Sword of Cain, then that's interesting. In my opinion, at least. Anyway, yeah, so 10 out of 10. You could either border and say 11 out of 10. It kind of breaks the system. That's just ridiculous how much resistance he had there. And the fact that he wasn't even at max. Hang on a sec. He was right. Look, it says 52% here, but it was only 12%. Sorry, it was only, it was 12% less. It was 40% in the actual battle. Apparently, one of the texts that he has is bugged. Apparently, but I'm not sure. So he has more physical resistance here than what he had in the battle. It could have been compensated by Wurzag's trait, but it looks like you maxed out your traits now anyway, and Wurzag's probably dead. So, it, it was good enough. You know, the only person that got a single hit in was, was Ongrim. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, appreciate you, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.